Hey everyone, Dr. Anthony here. So what is room 12? Well, back in 1983 or 82, I don't remember, uh, middle school, I was about, I was age 12 and 13. They, they referred to it as the, the resource room or the remedial room. And a lot of the kids used to call it the retard room. And so it was the place that they put the kids who were not keeping up with the average students or the above average students, okay? So if you're basically falling below par academically, you uh, know all the standard achievement tests, the grades, whatever, um, that's the room they sent you. And at the time, it was pretty embarrassing because there were kids of all different levels that was below <laughs> the level of average. And there was a stigma to that room. Didn't learn a goddamn thing in there. Wasn't really much of a help. For me, it was a stigma that lasted over 40 years of my life. <laughs> because I saw myself as slow, stupid, retarded in certain areas, and always behind. And so, you know, when you when you come from that space, it's like, especially around the time of middle school, right? It's when you start going through your changes and you're trying to really start to discover who you are that's separate from your parents. And when you have your peers <laughs> referring to this particular room, you know, as the retard room, that's like, whoa, it starts to make you look at like, Like, who am I? What am I? And, 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 and am I, am I going to be struggling for the rest of my life? And I did. I struggled for a large majority of my life because I felt dumb. I couldn't keep up in school. And a lot of it was because I was completely disinterested. You know, they labeled me as attention deficit disorder, ADD, ADHD. I was hyper as all hell. I was the kid in the back of the room whose leg was going a million miles per hour. You know, the teacher if they were on question one on the bulletin board somehow within a flash of a second she's on number 20 i'm like how'd you get from one to 20 like that because i was daydreaming i was just thinking about sports girls you name it room 12 was such a stigma for me that i used to wait for the class bell to ring and everybody would go into the classroom before anybody saw me go into room 12. and so for years in years and years and years, I looked at myself as slow, as incapable. And so I bought the point of view that I was going to struggle, and I did struggle. And then when I decided to go to college, I went to a community college, and I basically fought to prove the system wrong. I made a lot of choices in my life that I probably wouldn't have made because I didn't work with my hands in terms of like, you know, like technical skills or mechanical skills. I never even knew how to change a flat tire. So I'm like, what the hell am I going to fucking do when I graduate high school? You know, and I was like, I was lost. So everybody else is going to college. There's no way in hell I, I was going to go to college. I, you know, didn't get good grades on my, the SATs, which were the benchmark that you you know that you needed to utilize and get good grades at the same time to get into a decent college. So I decided to go to community college. And my point of view is I'm gonna show them. So for 20, 30, 40 years, I fought so hard to be smart, to look smart, about feeling dumb. And it wasn't until Access Consciousness came along where it's like my my brain, my awareness. <laughs> was always everywhere, everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. What was fun for me was to move my body around, play sports, move. And it wasn't until Access Consciousness came along where the, the tools are actually designed to get you to look at whatever you've deemed as your wrongness, as a strongness. And Access Consciousness, uh, Gary Douglas, and Dr. Dane here, uh, they've created a specialty class called X-Men. Just like the movie with, with you know, the different uh, mutants that had special powers. 
And so what if whatever you decided was a handicap, whatever you decided was this like stronghold that couldn't get you to create the life that you'd like to have because you felt somehow that you were less than, dumber than. Um, what if that was actually a capacity, a gift, a power, a contribution? And for the first time in my life, I mean, even as a chiropractor, I didn't, even though I was great with my hands, didn't quite feel like I had the space to be all of me. And it wasn't until Access Consciousness came along that actually showed me that these X-Men capabilities, this ADD, ADHD, OCD, autism, they're actually capacities that don't necessarily get acknowledged in this reality. They certainly don't get acknowledged in the traditional school system. And I know a lot, a lot of school systems have come a long, 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 long way in terms of implementing programs for kids like us. Well, I'm a man now, I'm not a kid anymore. But God, you know, it still feels, when I talk about get going, you could really, really perceive the, the energy of that stigma. So I spent my whole life fighting against it to prove the system wrong while losing myself in the whole, whole equation. And it really hadn't been until Access Consciousness came along where I get to uh, to dive into this world of, of energetic possibilities, doing energy work as, as a healer, uh, and, doing, and facilitating people to, to empower people to see the greatness within themselves with the tools. It was the first time, the first time in my life that these X-Men capacities actually worked to my advantage, so to speak. It didn't feel wrong. It didn't feel like I had to go from being out here and forcing myself to come here like I did when I was in school. And so I could go on and on and on and on and on about this. And it's not an easy topic because people are like, oh, you're a doctor and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but I had to work my ass off. I had to work my fucking ass off more so than the average person because I had the point of view that I wasn't even average. <laughs> and so I've slowly gotten over that point of view as I, as I, I'm able to utilize my gifts with the tools of access consciousness. And I'm so grateful, so blessed on so many different levels. So what if these capacities is a strongness and not a wrongness? And how can you use them to your advantage? And many people do, many people already are. But for me personally, it wasn't until I got to access that I was able to be all of me and function in all those energies that I used to be when I was a kid, but they try to stifle me. They try to put me in a box, calm down, focus. I'm like, I don't wanna focus. I just wanna play <laughs> and have fun. Focusing sucks, it hurts, it's like, ah. So we have an X-Men class coming up and you know, it's like whether, whether you have ADD, ADHD, OCD, autism, or you have a child or a family member, it's really not about just that, but it's really about accessing your capacities and your capabilities and discovering how you learn, discovering how you receive information, discovering how you are aware a lot more than you give yourself credit. And for all those years, you've been making that awareness wrong. <laughs> Nobody taught you how to use it. But now there's a platform, now there's a, there's a foundation in which you can take these capacities of yours that in many circles have been made to be a handicap. That's not, they're a gift. And so what would it take for you to acknowledge the gift in you? So I invite you to come play to this X-Men class I have coming up somewhere. I guess it'll be up there, down here somewhere. And uh, don't make your wrongness a wrongness anymore. It's time for you to be you. 
It's time to recognize your capacities, your potencies, your powers, your gifts. Just have fun and not have to fight against that stigma ever again.